Hello, everybody, and welcome into this edition of HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here. And right now, we are joined by the seniors of the Hopkinton Hillers girls varsity basketball team. Ladies, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. Uh, so why don't we go around and have you all introduce yourselves, just in case there are people out there that, doesn't know, that don't know who's who. Uh, so we'll start on the left. Um, my name is Lexi Trendle. I'm Jesse Ionelli. I'm Carly Hedstrom. I'm Brooke Doherty. I'm Kiki Bossbender. I'm Lauren Chow. Terrific. All right. So um, how has your season been? And I know you girls have played together for quite a while. It's an experienced group this year. How has your experience been? And uh, I know the last few games, you certainly uh, would have liked to come out on the other side, but uh, you've all been tremendous for the Hiller girls program. Uh, how has the season been and uh, how close is this group? It seems like a pretty close group. We'll start on the left. Um, we're definitely super close. We've been playing together since fourth or fifth grade, maybe, and we've always been on the same team. So I'm really happy that we've been able to spend our senior year together and all of us stuck with it because it's been well worth the five years, six years. Yeah, I think the team is super close this year, which is really exciting and I'm really glad about. Obviously, last year, our entire team was comprised of juniors and seniors. So coming back this year, we were the only varsity returners, our senior class. Um, so there was a lot of new people on the team and it's been so fun to get to make those relationships with the new girls and really just get so close and we're all best friends, the best. Mm -hmm. And I think like basketball has been really, special. you guys can't laugh when I'm talking, I swear, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Um, I've just been like really grateful for basketball because I feel like I've been able to make so many friends and like connections with everybody through it. Like these are my, all my best friends and I'm just really happy to have basketball. Yeah, I agree with everyone saying before me and we are all, we are all best friends. And the season did start off a little rough with everyone getting COVID and having to kind of postpone our season, but we ramped it up and it's just been uphill from, here, from there. Yeah, I mean, we are super close. Um, like Lexi was saying, we've been playing together for a while now. Um, and especially, like, since, like, this is a long season, like, we definitely, like, ups and downs. Like, we've kept close. Like, we kept as a team, which is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've definitely had our ups and downs, like, especially at the beginning of the season. But, um, like, not only seniors, like, everyone is just so close on this team, which makes everything, like, games and practices just so much more fun. And uh, he's not here, so I guess I can ask this. How's it been playing for Coach Greco? I think it's been really good. He has, he puts a huge emphasis on like everyone being a part of the team and everyone making sure that there's no like tensions between players. So I think he's a part of the reason that our team is so close. And I'm really grateful that he's been our coach for the last four years and put us in that position. Yeah, I totally agree. I love playing for Coach Greco and it's so clear how much he cares about the team and just the amount of time and effort that he puts into this program and into our team specifically is like unparalleled. So it's really nice to have a coach that cares that much and you can tell that he really is in this, not like he's in this to be with us and to have the team and to help us go far. Yeah, I agree with both of them. And I also just think like a really big part about his coaching is like being honest with us and like making sure we know what we need to work on. And I think that's been really beneficial for the team for like if someone's like missing their player on defense or not getting over and help, like he'll definitely let you know. And I think it like adds a lot to the team. Yeah, I agree with Jesse in the point where he spends a lot of time and effort on it. Like every game, there's a big poster in the locker room waiting for us. And it's kind of just like a game rundown. And it it's very like perfect and precise. And so you can just tell how much time and effort he puts into it. Yeah, and even like the assistant coaches, like Coach Chatton and Coach Pucci, like this is Coach Pucci's first year. And like she like went from playing hoops in college to now coaching. So definitely like a huge transition that like she's taken like to heart and that she really does care about us as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with what everyone else has said. I love playing Coach Gecko. Um, you can just see how dedicated he is, like with everything from his practice plans to like the pregame um, posters that we look at. It's just great. Absolutely. He certainly does a great job. Uh, and he's done a great job with this program since he's been at the helm. Uh, so let's go around the table. I want to hear each of your fa your favorite memory from the season. I know I'm kind of throwing you in the fire here, but what's your favorite uh, memory from the season? We'll um, oh, go ahead. 
For me, I think our, my favorite memory was when we uh, beat Dedham at home. That was our first game. I feel like we really gelled together and it just felt really good. They have a player going D1. So we were able to shut her down on defense and really play as a team to get the win. And it was a great team win. So that was really exciting. And after that game, I feel like everyone felt like we could beat anyone. My favorite memory is probably our New Year's sleepover this year. Every year, it's like a tradition for HHS, GBB. The team has a big New Year's sleepover. So we're all together on New Year's and celebrate bringing in the new year. So we did that this year at Lexi's house. And it was super fun just being with the team. And like Kiki and Lexi made a really yummy rice crispy dessert. <laughs> we had an ice cream cake. It was just so fun to spend that time together. And that was in the beginning of our season because the start of our season was pushed back a little bit because of our little COVID. Um, so it was really nice to get to like create those bonds at the beginning. Um, I think my favorite memory was winning our Millis game. It was away at Millis and it was one of my first games of the season because I was injured at the beginning. So I think like it was a really fun game and I think we did a really good job playing together. Kind of like Lexi was talking about, we had a couple games where we struggled to like play as a team and play together. But I think Millis, similar to Dedham, we really clicked and like played as a team and it like was a really good win. For me, my favorite memory was when we went out to Chick-fil-A after <laughs> one of our games. It was just, there were so many laughs and smiles and we kind of like got the whole place involved in our energy and everyone was like talking to everyone and we took a huge group photo with like all the employees and just some random people in the restaurant. <laughs> and it was just really fun and memorable. Um, my favorite memory is definitely senior night. Um, like we all got to play together and it was kind of like our last home game. So it's like happy, sad. Um, then we came in, like, you know, we lost by one to Ashland. So now like playing them again, like we definitely had a little chip on our shoulder. Like we like definitely like wanted this game so much. And I think we all played together as well. My favorite memory was also Chick-fil-A because we just came off like a great win. And then we were able to come together and celebrate at Chick-fil-A with like Brooke said, like all the employees and everything. And it was just a really fun night. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say my favorite memory was probably the Ashland game because that was a great game. Uh, Kiki Fossbetter, 29 points. Unreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully you'll get a playoff spot. Uh, I know that with the state ranking system, you have a possibility, but uh, what are some of your goals for these last few games of the season? Uh, what are some of the things that you'd like to accomplish? I think that I just want to see the team come together. Like, We've said this before, but we've definitely had ups and downs, and sometimes we don't click during games. So I just hope that we can click as a team and like show everyone, including the underclassmen, what it feels like to play as a part of the team so that they can continue that as they move up and as they're mentoring the younger um, players. Yeah, I agree. I think one thing I really am hoping for in these next couple of games is just being able to deal with adversary, adversity. Um, obviously, <laughs> one of the things we've been working on this year is like, when another team goes on a run and it's obviously hard on your energy and your mentality, but just like staying focused and keeping your energy up and remaining in the game and not giving up and good body language and all of that. So obviously Medfield's a good team and they're going to go on runs and we're going to go on runs. So I'm looking forward to Friday night, hopefully getting that win. Cause that was a close game as well. And just playing through the whole game and playing tough. Um, I think I just want everyone to really enjoy like our last week or if we get to playoffs, like weeks of the season, I just think like um, even like losing and stuff like that, like it kind of like takes away from the fun when you don't get that win. But I just like want to make sure everyone like comes together, kind of like Lexi was saying, and just like enjoys playing basketball for the fun of it. Yeah, for me, I am looking forward to the um, to playing my last couple games with my best friends. And I just want us all to put together 32 minutes of a game and just play our hearts out. Yeah, I mean, regardless of the score and regardless, like, if we do end up making tournament, like, I really hope we finish out these games strong. Like, these are the last couple of games that, like, we'll get to play, like, all together. Um, so I just want to finish it strong. Yeah, I think for these last few games, we're really focusing on trying to pick up our defense and just make sure we, like, box out every play and get on the floor for everything um, just to give us an even better chance of continuing our season. Well, hopefully you could take down Medfield on Friday. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, any future athletic plans? Are you playing any sports in the spring? And also, where are you going to college? And are you going to be playing any sports in college? Um, I will not be playing any sports in college, maybe club or intramural. 
and I'm not sure where I'm going to college either. So I <laughs> was not the best person to start. But. <laughs> Um, I am also undecided as to where I'm going to college, and I will not be playing any sports, <laughs> but I do have my um, lacrosse season coming up this spring, so I'm looking forward to that. I also don't know where I'm going to college yet, um, and I'm also, similar to Lexi, not playing as, and Jesse not playing a sport in college, um, and I'm not playing a spring sport, but I'm excited to go like support all my friends like in baseball yes. and lacrosse and stuff like that this spring. Yeah, I'm also undecided. <laughs> <laughs> But I do really want to play club soccer, basketball in college, just to keep with it and stay healthy. I recently got my acceptance in the Trinity yesterday. <laughs> Where? So I'll be playing basketball and running track there. Um, so, yeah. Wait, where was it? I'm sorry, I missed it. Thanks, guys. You have to repeat yourself. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I recently got my acceptance on Monday to Trinity, so I'll be playing basketball and running track there. Ah, congratulations. Yeah. Um, and I'm committed to play basketball at Colby, so I'm very excited for that. That is terrific. All right, well, girls, uh, we hope that the rest of the season goes very well for you, and hopefully you'll get a nice win against Medfield on Friday, get a little revenge, but Congratulations on a great season. It's been fun following you throughout your uh, Hiller careers, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you again on the basketball courts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, you're tuned into HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here with Hopkinton Hillers girls varsity basketball head coach Mike Greco. Coach Greco, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so you have a pretty talented, experienced team this year. Uh, six seniors that we've watched play uh, quite a few years. Uh, they seem to have a very good. Um, repertoire together uh, a good uh re relationship on the court since they've been playing together so long uh can you talk about this year's team sure um yeah as, as you mentioned we're we're uh very senior laden you know with six of them there four of them i've had since they were freshmen and then uh the other two you know joined the varsity their their sophomore years um and we've really been able to sort of see them grow. Um, some of them, you know, stepped right in, you know, to prominent roles as freshmen and, you know, kind of really had to grow up, you know, on the court in front of everybody. Um, while others, you know, were sort of able to, you know, work on their games behind the scenes a little bit before stepping into bigger roles um, either last year or this year. And, you know, it's it's funny, you know, for, for some of them, they're playing like, you know, their, their 60th and 70th varsity game. Um, you know, it feels like they've been here forever. You know, sometimes you watch some of those college games, or at least you used to, you know, and see the same guy there forever. And it's like, you know, I can't believe he's still in school there, but um, that's kind of what it feels like with this group is that, you know, they've, they've been together for three and four years now. Um, you know, it, you know, obviously we know them well, um, you know, we're enjoyed having them for the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. It must help, especially with all the, difficulties with the COVID situation, having an experienced group that kind of just knows the routine. Absolutely. You know, last year, especially, which was such a, such a different animal, you know, with, with no locker rooms, no pregame, um, playing the abbreviated schedule. We got, you know, we got a late start. Um, you know, we were lucky last year that we actually, we returned all 11. Um, and, and so the, you know, the team chemistry and stuff was, was there from the start from the year before. And then this year, you know, re returning those six, even though it's been a little bit more of a regular schedule, you know, we still had the, you know, the, the lengthy absence, um, you know, beginning of the season when, when we had to have five games rescheduled. And so having that, that experienced group uh, was, was huge for us in terms of being able to get stuff in and practice and, you know, get ready to play games on short notice. And this team right now, they're right on the cusp of the playoffs uh, they're still technically in with the new state system, I believe, since it's top 32, if I'm correct. 
That's right. Yeah. So right now we're ranked 30th. Um, so, you know, this, despite the fact that we're below 500, uh, if you look at the, the power rankings on the MIAA site, we actually have the second strongest uh, opponent schedule um, or, or strength of schedule in all of division one. So that's, that's definitely helping us out right now. So right now I think we're ranked 30th. Um, and so you're right. The playoffs started tomorrow. We we'd be in. So we're, we're hoping to stay there. A big game coming up against Medfield this Friday. Uh, can you talk about this uh, Medfield team? Uh, they beat you in the first uh, meeting. They did. Yeah. They got us at our place. Uh, they are always a tough program to play. Um, playing in their gym tomorrow night on senior night is, is going to be a tall task. Uh, I'm sure they're going to have a, a, a big crowd there. They got the boys and girls playing back to back senior night for both programs. Um, they're an exceptionally well coached team. They run a killer one, two, two, three quarter court press. And it just seems like they, they are just always in the right position at the right time. They do a tremendous job getting up in passing lanes. Um, and they've got a very balanced, uh, also, you know, with a lot of uh, upperclassmen, but a very, very balanced scoring attack as well in the offensive end. Absolutely. It should be a, a couple of great battles on Friday as you'll have the girls boys double header. Um, I wish it was at Hopkinton so we could broadcast it, but that's okay. Same. I'm looking forward to seeing the boys play. It'll be, be one of the first times I've, I've had a chance to watch them this year. Uh, you'll be impressed. You'll be impressed. Uh, Coach Keen has a good squad over there. Yeah, I've, I, I talk to him often and, and you know, we're, we're always sharing stories and, you know, telling each other how the games went and stuff like that. So I've been keeping close tabs, but I'm, I'm excited to be able to see them in person. Absolutely. Uh, Kiki Fossbender has been uh, tremendous this season. Um, in many games where the team struggled to get points, Kiki Fossbender was able to pick the team up, put it on her back and grab a victory such as the win against Ashland where she dropped 29 points. Uh, can you talk about her performance this season? Uh, it seems she's really come a long way. Yeah, she has, she has always had a knack for scoring the ball. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, the last two seasons, particularly since she's become an upperclassman, has gained more confidence uh, in herself, um, you know, to be able to fight through, you know, some, some of the tougher games and, um, you know, when things aren't quite going our way or something like that. But she, she's kind of shown a lot of, you know, maturity and being able to, you know, have that scores mentality that even when, when things aren't falling early or the calls aren't going our way early, you know, she's able to, you know, to keep fighting. And when she gets it going, you know, she can, she can fill it up in a hurry. And so we've seen that, you know, several times over the last several years where, you know, you know, she might only have a handful of points heading into the third quarter or something. And all of a sudden, you know, she'll score 12, 12 straight or something like that. Um, so when she, when she gets hot, you know, we, we run a lot of, a lot of different sets for her to get her shots. Cause she's, she's certainly our best scorer. Absolutely. And she gave us some breaking news the other day. She's uh, going to be, playing I heard Trinity. that's great. That's great. Yeah. I heard, you know, anything about the Trinity program? Uh, I'm sure I'll know more in the coming weeks. Um, you know, I, I, I believe they play in the same, uh, the same league as Colby, which means that, uh, she and Lauren Cho will be facing off against each other uh for the next four years so that'll be interesting but um you know I'll, I'll definitely have to get to some games maybe we'll have to have a h camp college uh broadcast uh, sounds we'll great the uh, ncaa about that one uh but you also uh have five other uh great seniors that have contributed a lot to this program and lauren Cho, carly hedstrom lexi trendle jesse ianelli uh could you just talk a little bit about each of them absolutely um, you know, Lauren has been, you know, our, our starting point guard for four years. I, I, I think she started every game. Um, she is absolutely tremendous with the basketball in her hands, particularly in the open court. Like that is, that is truly where she excels. Um, she really is a, a one, one person press break. And, and you know, she orchestrates our, our, all our transition offense, um, because she's so fast with the ball in her hands. Um, you know, she's one of those kids that, you know, as a, as a freshman, kind of stepped into a big role, you know, probably before she was really ready for it, but handled it with such poise and grace, um, you know, and has has truly excelled over the last four years. Um, you know, Brooke Doherty has, uh, you know, been our, our best defensive player for the last, you know, I think three years. She's won the, our defensive player of the year. 
Um, she has really started to find her rhythm on offense lately this year as well, probably averaging eight or nine, maybe 10 points a game over our last six or seven. Uh, you know, and she's been, you know, with, with Lexi out, she's been forced to play inside, you know, out of position a little bit. And she's been, she's been tremendous for us playing, playing tough inside and, you know, staying out of foul trouble and, and, and contributing uh, both ends of the court. Uh, Carly, you know, unfortunately has, has had the two shoulder injuries this year. And, and so we couldn't, you know, really get her going for a long stretch. But when, when we had her on the court, she's a very good shooter, you know, gives us a lot of toughness and physicality, you know, and since her injury, you know, she's been, been a tremendous leader on the bench and, and helping those kids out, giving a lot of energy. Lexi is everything you'd want in a player. Uh, she has every intangible you could ever name. She hustles. She knows offensively and defensively where we're supposed to be. She gives a ton of energy. She's tremendous in coaching up the underclassmen. Um, I, I think like Lauren, she's started almost every game for us um, since, since her freshman year. She's another one of those kids that, you know, kind of had to go trial by fire as a freshman stepping in, you know, to a prominent role. And but but it likewise has has truly you know, embraced it, um, you know, prior to her injury, I think, I think she was our, our leader in minutes played over the last four seasons. Um, so we're hoping that we're going to get her back, uh, you know, sometime this weekend, but um, I know she's working very hard to get back from her ankle injury right now. And then uh, Jesse Ionelli is very, you know, very much like Lex is just a- every intangible you'd want, you know, she, she is in many cases, you know, the glue that, you know, kind of holds the team together in a lot of ways. She knows everything we want to do on the court on offense and defense from every position. Um, like Brooke, she's, she's probably playing out of position right now, playing down low a, a little bit. Um, you know, we're pretty much starting five guards at the moment. And, um, you know, she is just a tremendous, tremendous worker. She's got, you know, a good head for the game. You know, she's always got the, the, the right body language, you know, even when things were like going our way or not going our way. Um, she just, she plays so hard every possession. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about her. Absolutely. I think, I think I got all six of them there. You did. You did. All right. That was impressive. Uh, and with this group, a lot of talent on the roster, not a lot of height, but it seems that the experience makes up for it. Yeah, well, we are we are certainly undersized, and even even when we were at full strength, that was something we talked a lot about. About you know, there's a lot of teams out there that are going to be bigger than us, and so we, you know, have struggled at times to to hold our own in the glass. But you know, we it's not for lack of effort. Um, you know, we try to what we lack in size, we try to make up with you know pressure defense and pressing and you know getting out in transition and moving the basketball. Uh, I mean, the kids the kids have embraced it. You know, they they run the floor hard and. You know, with Lauren pushing the ball, we, you know, when we're, when we're going well, we find a lot of, a lot of baskets in transition that way. And I've noticed a lot with your teams, similar to coach Keen's teams, they're always hustling out there. They're always getting to the ball. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they, you know, obviously I learned a lot from him being on his staff for 10 years. And so we, we have a lot of similarities in the way our teams like to play. Absolutely. And uh, he let us know a couple of weeks ago that the, Basketball summer camp is going to be coming back this year. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We're very excited to have that back. You know, I know we, we had the year off because of, uh, you know, the, the pandemic. Uh, but the girls camp this year is going to be, we have two weeks. We have the first week is going to be June 27th through July 1st. And our second week is going to be July 18th to 22nd. And we'll have, uh, we have a tremendous staff coming back to work. Um, a lot of the current and former varsity players as well as our, our entire coaching staff a lot of the boys staff um so we're, we're excited we, we can't wait to get back in the gym with it absolutely now how does it work are the girls and the boys practicing at the same time or is it different hours no we we uh we alternate weeks so uh, we uh the girls will start the week of june 27th and then both of us we, we take the week of the fourth off and then the boys will go i think it's the 11th through the 15th and then girls will be the week after, and then the boys will wrap up with the last week of July. And uh, can you drop any names of any former Hillers or uh, the girls from this year's team that are, that are going to be helping out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, probably the most prominent one is, is uh, Michaela Pucci, who's our, our JV coach. We're thrilled to have her back on staff now, and, uh, you know, she'll, she'll be there with us. 
Uh, Marissa Prawl, who was uh, graduated in 2018, um, is wrapping up her senior year at Regis. She'll be back working with us. Um, Kate Welzel, who uh, was class of 2016, I believe, um, is just finishing up her master's and she's going to be with us for a couple of weeks. And then some of our more recent graduates, uh, I was just in contact this week with uh, Lulu Murphy and Caroline Connell, um, who graduated last year, along with uh, Maggie Hedstrom and Millie Sensony. Um, we're hoping to work. So we got, you know, some things to hammer out and, and figure out exactly how much staff we can hire. Uh, but it, there's definitely some names from the past. And then, you know, some of our, our current uh, players that have helped out in the past have been Lexi Trendle, uh, Jesse Ionelli, Kiki Fossbender, and Lauren Cho. Uh, Carly Hedstrom, and I, I think the whole senior class has been there at some point um, helping out. So uh, I'm not exactly sure who's working what weeks yet, but, you know, we're, we're figuring that out. That's terrific. That's a all-star roster right there, I would say. Yeah, it's a great staff. It's a great staff to work with. And the camp continues to grow. I'd imagine uh, signups will be starting soon. You don't have an exact date on that yet, do you? Uh, they, sh they can sign up for the second week. The, the first week, um, the registration, I believe, is going to open on March 1st. Um, they're just holding off because if there's a certain number of snow days, then we may have to adjust some of the hours. But, you know, based on the weather today and tomorrow, hopefully we're we're in the clear with snow days. And um, so that that should open up on March 1st, I believe. Uh, and anybody who wants to register can can do so through the Hopkinton Parks and Rec website. That's excellent. Well, coach, uh, we hope that you get a big win on Friday and we certainly hope that Thank we'll you. be uh, covering some playoff games this season. Uh, Congratulations on a great season and all the great work you've done with the uh, girls varsity basketball program. Thank you so much. Appreciate you having us. On Wednesday, February 9th, Hiller boys hockey took on Holliston and celebrated senior night. Here's a look at the festivities. First, number 23, Cal Greenwood. Number 20, Captain Michael Berman. Parents, Alyssa Benton. Number 17, Captain Noli Barrett. Parents, Amy Ivy Trump. Number 14, JJ Bianchi, Karen Bianchi Bennett. Number 12, Spencer Horgan, Bob Kelly, Brother Ronco. And number 10, Alex Durian. And the Hiller Seniors. First period, the Hillers did a goal. And there's a shot by Wynn into traffic. Sent out in front, there's a shot and a goal! Wyatt Ian Tosca! Wyatt Ian Tosca makes it one to nothing, and the Hillers poured it on in the second period. Wynn across to Peterson. Peterson has some speed, look out, closes it, take the shot, and it's a goal! The junior Isaac Peterson rips it in! By Greenwood. Greenwood sends it out, shot to Rocher, and it's a goal! What a beauty! DeRocher set up shop in front of the net, and Greenwood able to send it right to him. 
And DeRocher makes it three to nothing. Hillers with 3.55 left to go in the second period. Berman sends it into the sluts. Zolotarev with a shot and we get another goal. Vasily Zolotarev, the junior. The assist will go to Michael Berman. And Rats up against Larsh. Berman. Rister, still out in front, and it is gonna be popped in by Scardino. Colin Logan couldn't hold on to it, and Scardino able to take it away and pop it in to make it five to nothing, Hillers. Hillers take the win seven to nothing and improve to seven and seven on the season. Declan DeRocher and Ryan Title had two goals each in the win. On Saturday, February 12th, Hiller Boys Hockey lost a heartbreaker in Ashland. After leading 4-0, they gave up four goals in the third period and an overtime goal as Ashland took the victory 5-4. On Tuesday, February 15th, Hiller Hockey fell 2-1 to, to Martha's Vineyard in a game that was moved to the Vineyard due to a lack of home ice availability. Hillers are now 7-9 on the season. On Wednesday, February 9th, following the boys' senior night game, girls hockey celebrated senior night prior to their game with Norwood. Here's a look. Number 18, Captain fell to Norwood in the game 6-2. Girls hockey fell in a well-fought-out game to Lemonster on Monday, February 14th, 5-1. Morgan Frazier had the lone goal for Hopkinton Dover Sherbourne co-op. Hiller Wrestling placed fourth in the Division II West Sectional Championship. There were strong performances by several Hillers, including James Muzzy, Justin Sokol, and Adam Distasio. On Friday, February 11th, Hiller Girls Basketball celebrated senior night prior to their game versus Ashland. Here's a look. Number 22, Captain Kiki Fossbender is joined by her mother, Melissa, and her father, Justin. Number 31, Captain... Carly Hedstrom is joined by her mother Shannon and her father Greg and her brother Will. Number 33, Captain Lexi Trendell is joined by her with her mother Jen, her father Gary, her sisters Cammy and Poppy, and her grandparents Cindy and Marcel. Hillers trailed 47 to 42, heading into the fourth quarter, but made a strong comeback. Oh, off the back iron, rebound, Doherty. Kicks it out to Davies now up top. Good shot. Plenty of time. Show for three. Yes. Oh. Huge. Davies. 
Fossbender, Ionelli. Back to Fossbender for three. Got oh! it! Or four, yeah. But Fossbender over to Davies. Back to Fossbender for three. Oh! Got it! <laughs> wow! Making it rain. Jump on my back, I'll carry you to the promised land. Hopkinton takes the win. 57 to 52 over Ashland and improves to six and eight on the season. Kiki Fossbender dropped a team high, 29 points in the win and carried the team to victory. On Sunday, February 13th, Hiller girls basketball fell on the road to a very good Norwood team, 64 to 40. On Tuesday, February 15th, the Hiller girls fell in a tough one on the road versus Westwood, 50 to 31. The Hiller girls are now six and 10 on the season. Hiller boys basketball fell to Westwood on February 15th at home, 63 to 47. Nate Casper had a team leading 17 points for the Hillers who are now 11 and five on the season. Congratulations to the Hiller cheer team they placed third at the Eye of the Tiger competition this past weekend. Congratulations to Bianca Pal. She was voted in as the MIAA Student Athlete of the Month. She participates with the Unified Basketball Team and does very valuable work throughout the community. Congratulations, Bianca, and great job being a great example for student athletes. Hopkinton High School also received the nice banner you see on the screen for their tremendous contribution to the Special Olympic Unified Sports Program. And last but not least, congratulations to Hopkinton High School track legend, Tiana Real Wood, for being inducted into the MSTCA Athletes Hall of Fame. Hello, everybody, and welcome into HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here, and right now we are joined by the Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Basketball Team. We have head coach Tom Keene, as well as the captains, Caleb Graham, Nate Casper, and Nick Paharik. Guys, how are you? Doing good. Very good. Thank you. All right, well, uh, a tough game against Norwood the other day, uh, Coach Keene. And uh, Norwood, very good team. They ended up uh, getting the win in that game. And a uh, few offensive struggles to start off, but you made a nice comeback in the fourth quarter. Uh, could you talk about that uh, game a little bit? Obviously, it must have not been so fun to have the, the uh, seven-game winning streak come to an end. Yeah, it was a, definitely a tough game uh, yesterday uh, in the late evening. Uh, Norwood's a very good team. They've got a great season going. You know, they're 11 and two now, 12 and two now. Um, so, I mean, there's no shame in losing to a, an excellent team like that. Of course, we wish we had, uh, you know, played a little bit better on the defensive end and we wish we were able to convert a, a little bit more, uh, both inside and outside offensively. But, um, you know, overall, you know, I can't be uh, sad about the effort. You know, the effort was there right to the very end. So, you know, we're happy with that, and uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow night in Holliston. On to the next. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, your team is 9-4 and four on the season, and you have some uh, great leadership at the helm. Uh, can you talk about the team this year and, of course, uh, your three captains that you have? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've got a very well-balanced team, um, some good guard play, some good inside play this year. And we also have good balance between uh, juniors and seniors and one, uh, actually two sophomores. Um, but, you know, I really can't say enough about the seniors, uh, Caleb and Nick and Nate, um, Alex Smith and Matt Kaufman. Um, and I'm missing one. Who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting somebody. Right. I forgot somebody. Oh, it'll, it'll come back to me. But the senior senior leadership has been outstanding. Uh, Owen Schneer. Owen, Owen Schneer. Schneer. Yeah. So, um, you know, those six have, have really done a great job leading this team. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've been into it 
every single step of the way, every game. Um, they've always been uh, team first, um, and they they've just got a wonderful uh, spirit about them. So it's been a it's been a pleasure to coach them this year, and I, I look forward to the last uh, three weeks of the season, and then the state tournament. Hopefully, if we can get that one more win. Absolutely, you certainly have the talent to do it. Uh, Caleb, we'll start with you. Uh, what's it been like playing with this group? How's your season going? And uh, what's your ultimate goal for this season? Uh, the season's great so far. I mean, we had a tough loss last night, and it stinks that we can't play them again. But uh, so far this season, I think our best attribute is our like togetherness. Like we're always doing stuff after practice with the team. Like right now, we're at a spagger, hanging out. And um, ultimate goal at the end of the season is it was to win the TBL, but um, we can't now. But now it's just have a deep run in the playoffs. Absolutely. Uh, Nate, uh, what's it been like playing with this group? Uh, how's your season going? And what's your hope for this team uh, in the upcoming games and heading into the postseason, hopefully? Uh, it's been great. I mean, this team just has so much chemistry, like on and off the court. Like every day we're doing something. Even before the season season even started, we were always like hanging out, like where it's basically like a family. And uh, the goal for the season is, I mean, to just keep winning, like make it as far as we can and just keep having fun and just being able to play with these guys. And uh, Nick, how's your season going? And uh, what are some of the things that you've been working on uh, this year to improve your game? Uh, season's been great. Uh, I love the boys. We've kind of created like a family atmosphere kind of like what they said. And uh, I guess some goals are to just keep winning and keep becoming closer and closer as a team. Absolutely. Uh, so, Coach, uh, you got Holliston coming up. You saw them uh, once already this season. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this Holliston team that you have coming up Tuesday night? Yeah, so Holliston, um, it's going to be uh, – you know, a, a good, a good game for us, a good, a good test for us. They, um, they have a younger team, you know, they have a lot of juniors, not a lot of seniors on that team, but uh, they certainly have talented players. Um, but, you know, we're looking forward to uh, senior night. So we're going to have senior night tomorrow um, for the Holliston game. And it's a great opportunity for us to honor the six seniors and, um, you know, really, um recognize all the time that they spent from travel basketball to um, middle school team to the high school team and all the years that they've spent playing in the Hopkinton system. So it'll, it'll be a good uh, night tomorrow night. So hopefully we can get a lot of fans out to the athletic center and uh, we'll be able to honor those six seniors and hopefully our play will uh, be worthy of senior night tomorrow. Absolutely. And uh, you, you must be happy to have the student section back rooting for you. Absolutely. I mean, that's been one of the best things about this year is, um, you know, getting closer and closer to what it was like before uh, the pandemic, really, you know. So, I mean, I, I realized this year how much, you know, I missed a full season and how much I missed, you know, being around the team and how much I miss the practices and the games. And, you know, it, it definitely um, makes you feel gratitude for, for being somewhat uh, back to normal a little bit. And hopefully uh, next year will be even more so. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, if you can't make the senior night game, we'll have it for you live on HCAM. Uh, but hopefully uh, everybody in town could be there to have a rowdy gymnasium for Holliston tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, Caleb, what has been uh, some of your best memories of the season and how have you liked uh, playing for Coach Keen? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> um, it's been awesome so far. I mean, Coach really holds us together, uh, lets us know like when it's time to get serious and focus on the game. And every once in a while, we joke around at practice. So, it's, it's really a great like environment. Um, my favorite moment this season was probably either our Norton game or our Medfield game, two huge teams in the league. And we really like, we buckled down and played together and got two big wins. Yeah. That Medfield game. That was, that was a fun one. Uh, Nate, how about you? Uh, what are some of your favorite memories of the season so far? Uh, my favorite memory was probably that Norton game. 
you know, they had a huge, huge fan section that was uh, talking a lot. So just going in and beating them and shutting them all up was, uh, it was nice. And then that was also just like a big win on our season and it kind of sparked our seven game streak. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Nick, how about you? Uh, what are some of your favorite memories from the season? Uh, I uh, personally like our first game against Westboro. I thought it was like a huge win for us and to start off the season like that and see coach super happy. Like I thought it really brought us up and was fun. Absolutely. That's my alma mater there. So I was a little bit happy about that one. Playing coach yeah, that's right. That's my, that's my hometown Westboro. So I, I was excited about that win. It, it gave you some bragging rights. That's right. Well, the, the girls have a big game against Westboro this coming Thursday night. Crucial game for right. them. Yeah. Uh, coach, coach, so I'm curious. Uh, you've seen, a, obviously, a good look at the team being past the midseason point now. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you're going to have the team working on in, in, in practice uh, to get ready for these upcoming games in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, we're always looking for areas to improve. Uh, for us this year, um, you know, defensive rebounding is an area that, that we want to continue to improve upon. Um, and we've gotten better and better and better uh, communicating on defense, um, but it's still an area that we can, we can, we can make some improvements upon. Um, you know, we, we got hit hard by uh, COVID early in the season and we had some injuries early in the season. So it's uh, still taking some time to, um, get on court chemistry going uh, and rotations going. Um, so we continue to, to, to work on that as this, as the season goes on. I mean, we're getting better and better, but we're always looking to improve. All right. And uh, to the players, I'd imagine that uh, you are enjoying having the student section back. I'm sure it excites you having the uh, crowd noise when you're out there. Uh, so let's have you, uh, Make a plea to the people on why they should come check out this uh, very talented Hillers team. Caleb, we'll start with you. I um, mean, we're a fun team to watch. Uh, we like to, like, get out and transition, play fast. Um, and I think it'll be great. It'll help us out a ton if we have some rowdy crowds to, like, chirp the other team and keep us going. All right, Nate, how about you? Uh yeah, just like you said, we're a fun team to watch really fast. And uh, I feel like we have a couple of highlights every game that gets the crowd going. So, yeah, having a crowd there to keep the energy up would be uh, nice. Yeah, like the behind the back pass. That was nice. Uh, Nick, how about you? Make a plea to the people. Yeah, kind of like what they both said. Uh, our team plays with some swagger. So we're uh, pretty fun to watch, in my opinion. And uh, lastly, Coach, it seems like this is a – close-knit group uh and there's a lot of experience on this roster this group's been together uh for a while and i think uh certainly more than the roster uh last year it must help having a team that's experienced and has played together for a little while now yeah you know they played together uh in in the summertime all summer long they won the milford summer league together um and uh there's definitely a uh a cohesiveness uh, both on and off the court with this group, which of course makes it so much fun to coach and so much easier to coach when everybody's pulling in the same direction and everybody's together. So um, I can't uh, emphasize enough how fun they've been so far this year. And I, it is just a good esprit de corps, you know, a good, a good feeling, you know, when, when you're around them. So, you know, I'm looking forward to, seeing how much better we can get and what we can do for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Well, we're hoping for a very long playoff run. I certainly think there's uh, enough talent on this team to do so. And uh, coach, I know there's uh, a bit in the future, but are we going to have the Aylers uh, summer camp back this year as well? Absolutely. And you'll uh, see some of these guys coaching uh, yeah. at the Hillers. These guys all did a good job last year for me and uh, they're going to do another great job. So, yeah, uh, Coach, uh, we I always call it Coach Bliss Camp after the legendary Coach Bliss. But yeah, the Hopkinton Hillers Summer Basketball Camp will be uh, the uh, second 
week in uh, July and the fourth week of July. So after that, fourth uh, of July week. So, um, you know, we had a huge number of uh, students last year and uh, we look forward to having everybody back again this year. So that's uh, for boys going into uh, fourth, fifth and sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth for two weeks. So we're really looking forward to that. And I believe is uh, you take out of town kids as well, correct? Yeah, that's been more recently. We've taken out of town kids as well. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's been filling up very fast. So uh, I know Parks and Rec is trying to get the uh, signups earlier and earlier every year. So you got to look for that. You know, uh, these guys all went to camp when they were in third grade and now they're working as counselors and working as coaches. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful tradition. It's really a wonderful uh, camp to go to. So I highly encourage anybody to sign up for that through uh, Hopkinton Parks and Rec. Absolutely. We'll be on the lookout for the signups. Um, Caleb, Nate, Nick, you guys enjoy uh, coaching the camp. You excited uh, for another year coaching it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, me and Nate were refs this year, and I'm excited to have my own team to coach next year. Hopefully. <laughs> now, do you all have, like, your own teams and you compete with each other and maybe make yeah. some wagers and <laughs> – they have to they have to pay their dues a little bit they start out as counselors and then they go to coaching um so it, it all it always depends on what college guys are coming back and how many of those guys are coming back whether they have to stay as refs or if they get to graduate to be a coach you know so i hope they're hoping for those older guys to move on to bigger and better things so they can coach more yep. and less left yeah and less uh demonstrations yeah, less demonstrations. That's right. <laughs> the coaching job is a little bit better than the counseling job, I think, is what they're saying. Definitely. Absolutely. And uh, the winner gets the bragging rights if you got the coaching job, right? All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, we're looking forward to the rest of the season and uh, hopefully a very deep playoff run. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank no you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. There it is, uh, the Hopkins and Aylers boys basketball team, senior night against Hollison Tuesday. And be sure to check out the upcoming HCAM broadcast schedule. We'll have all the Hiller boys varsity basketball games uh, for you live on HCAM. Heading into the second period, Hopkinton added on. Stays on his feet. Up around the end boards now, DeRocher sends it out. And it's poked in! Charlie Perpera! Hillers hung on and took the game four to three. Hopkinton improved to six and six on the season. Congratulations to Hiller Boys Indoor Track and the wrestling team as they clinched the TVL Large Championship. Boys Indoor Track and Wrestling went through tough competition and COVID obstacles, but were able to clinch with their great performances throughout the season. On Saturday, February 5th, Medway Girls Hockey took down a shorthanded Hopkinton Dover Sherborne Girls Co op team 6 2 in a well fought out game. Also on Saturday, Hiller Boys Hockey fell to Norwood 6 2. And a tough loss for the Hillers. Hopkinton is now 6-7 and seven on the season. Also on Saturday, February 5th, the TVL Swimming Showcase took place. Hillers Boys Swimming and Dive finished second overall. Tyler Fallon, Davis Pishoff, and Kevin Goop were amongst the top performers for the Hillers. The Hiller girls finished seventh overall. Tess and Eve Weatherhead finished first and second in the diving competition. On Sunday, February 6th, the Hiller girls took on Westwood. Hillers made a comeback in the fourth quarter and it went right down to the end. Ooh. Oh, kick ball. Taken by Cho, to the rack, yes! This is the turnaround we need, right there. 
Connaughton down the lane and she responds. 17 points for Haley Jacobson. And she knocks them both down. Fossbender trying to get open. Out to Fossbender. Doherty. Back to Fossbender. Driving in. Long two. Knocks it down, but that was a two. Hopkinton ended up falling in the game 41 to 40. Hiller Girls basketball on Tuesday lost a tough one to Holliston on the road. 44 to 38 was the final. The Hiller girls are now five and seven on the season. Hiller boys basketball hosted Holliston on Tuesday for their senior night game. Here's a look at the senior night highlights. Guys, what they've done and all of their accomplishments, accomplishments over the last four years. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce the seniors and their family members. Uh, first up is Matt Kaufman with Christine and Jeff Kaufman and Lucas. Next is Nate Casper with Holly and Doug Casper and Zoe. Our next senior is Nick Faharik with mom and dad, Sarah and Ben. Our next senior is Caleb Ram with mom and dad, Rachel and Cliff. Next up is Owen Schnur with mom and dad, Laura and Frank and sister, Maya. Our final senior is Alex Smith with Beth Brady, Jim Smith, and Rowan. It was a 26-21 Hiller lead heading into the second half, and the Hopkinton offense opened up. Jasper takes it up. Easy for me to say. Sure. <laughs> Casper around the defender, Ooh. yes. Points, it's got to be close to 20 points. 17 so far. Diesenroth trying to come up with a steal, and he will. Casper, count it. Oh, yeah. well, I think a timeout is in order here. And we'll get a Holliston timeout. First field goal of the third quarter by Holliston. Casper kicks it out. Hyman for three. Count it! Nelly knows have it. Schnorr. Stop and pop. There it is. Oh, yes! You could see that happening in slow motion, and Schnorr buries it. Hillers outscore Holliston in the third quarter 21 to 3 and would take the win 67 to 29. The Hillers are now 10 and 4 on the season and have officially clinched a playoff spot. Nate Casper led the way in the win for the Hillers over Holliston, dropping 21 points.